I never should have gone to that abandoned asylum. It had always been a place of morbid fascination for me, and one fateful summer night, curiosity got the better of my fear. Little did I know that this decision would plunge me into a nightmare beyond my wildest imagination. It was a moonless night, and the air was thick with foreboding as I made my way through the overgrown path leading to the asylum. My footsteps echoed eerily in the silence, and the crunch of leaves beneath my feet was a symphony of dread. The asylum loomed ahead, its decaying facade illuminated only by the faint glow of my flashlight. As I stepped through the shattered remnants of a once imposing entrance, a chilling gust of wind enveloped me, as if the building itself were exhaling a malevolent breath. The interior was a maze of decaying corridors and shattered windows, where shadows danced in sinister patterns. My heart pounded, but I pressed on, compelled by an irresistible force. I followed the eerie sounds of distant whispers deeper into the asylum, my flashlight flickering as if it, too, was afraid of what lurked within. Suddenly I stumbled upon a room, its door hanging ajar. The room was furnished with rusted metal beds, their surfaces stained with unspeakable horrors. My stomach churned as I realized I was in a former patient's room. As I scanned the room with trembling hands, I noticed something etched into the wall beside one of the beds. It was a crude drawing, a grotesque figure with elongated limbs and hollow eyes. Beside it, the words he sees were scrawled in blood-red letters. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end, and I had an overwhelming sense that I was not alone. I fled the room, my heart pounding in my chest, and continued my journey through the asylum's dark recesses. The whispered voices grew louder, and I could now discern words, though they made no sense. It was as if the very walls were whispering their own dreadful secrets. I descended into the bowels of the building where I stumbled upon an operating theater bathed in an eerie, flickering light. In the center of the room stood an old surgical table, restraint still intact. My flashlight beam revealed an array of surgical instruments, some encrusted with dried blood. The air was heavy with the stench of antiseptic and decay. My gaze was drawn to a corner of the room where an ornate mirror hung. My reflection stared back at me, but its eyes were empty voids, devoid of any semblance of humanity. Panic gripped me as I stumbled backward, crashing into a tray of instruments. The mirror shattered and the room plunged into darkness. I fumbled for my flashlight, my breath ragged. When the light returned, I was no longer alone. A figure stood at the entrance to the operating theater, shrouded in darkness. My heart raced as I tried to discern its features, but it remained a formless specter. The whispers intensified, growing into a cacophony of torment. He sees, he sees, they chanted in a dissonant chorus. The figure advanced slowly its movements disjointed and unnatural. I tried to flee, but my legs betrayed me, refusing to move. As the figure drew closer, I finally caught a glimpse of its face, or what passed for one. It was a grotesque mask of agony and despair, twisted into a permanent rictus of torment. Its eyes, black pits devoid of humanity, fixed upon me with malevolence beyond comprehension. With a sudden surge of terror-fueled strength, I broke free from my paralysis and sprinted through the asylum's labyrinthine corridors, desperate to escape the relentless pursuit of the figure. The whispers pursued me, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I stumbled into a room filled with rows of rusted metal beds, each occupied by a shadowy figure. Their hollow eyes stared into nothingness, and their mouths moved in silent agony. I realized with horror that these were the tortured souls of the asylum's former patients trapped in an eternal nightmare. The figure was closing in, its distorted face contorted with sadistic glee. I had to find a way out to escape this living nightmare. With trembling hands, I pushed open a door at the end of the room and emerged into a moonlit courtyard. The asylum loomed behind me, its decaying facade now a nightmarish silhouette against the pale glow of the moon. I could still hear the whispers, faint but persistent as if the asylum itself were whispering its cursed secrets. I ran through the courtyard, through overgrown weeds and crumbling walls, until I reached the outer perimeter of the asylum grounds. As I crossed the threshold, a deafening silence enveloped me, and the whispers ceased. I collapsed onto the grass, gasping for breath, my mind reeling from the horrors I had witnessed. The asylum stood silent and foreboding, a sentinel of malevolence in the moonlight. I knew I had escaped with my life, but I would forever carry the scars of that night.
To this day, I cannot forget the figure with the face of torment, the tortured souls in the asylum's depths, or the haunting whispers that continue to echo in my nightmares. The asylum's secrets remain buried in its decaying walls, but I know one thing for certain. Some places are best left unexplored, for the darkness they hold can consume even the bravest of souls. It had been a grueling week of hiking in the remote wilderness, and exhaustion had settled deep into our bones. My friends and I had embarked on this adventure seeking solitude and adventure, but we had no idea what awaited us in the heart of the forest. As we set up camp near a serene lake, we couldn't help but marvel at the beauty that surrounded us. Towering trees formed a natural canopy overhead, and the still waters of the lake reflected the deep blue sky. It was idyllic, but the tranquility would soon give way to an unsettling sense of unease. On the second night, as we huddled around the campfire, a distant sound echoed through the trees. It was a soft, mournful wail that seemed to carry on the wind. We dismissed it as an animal, or perhaps the wind itself, but the unease in our group was palpable. As the days passed, the wailing continued, growing closer with each passing night. We attempted to rationalize it, attributing the sound to wildlife or the peculiar acoustics of the forest, but it gnawed at our nerves. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows through the trees, we heard it again, louder and more haunting than before. This time it was unmistakably human, a cry of anguish that sent shivers down our spines. We decided to investigate, to determine the source of this eerie wail. Armed with flashlights, we ventured deeper into the forest following the sound. The path grew treacherous and the trees closed in around us, their branches clawing at the sky like skeletal fingers. The wail led us to a small clearing where we discovered an old dilapidated cabin. Its windows were shattered and the roof sagged under the weight of years of neglect. The cry seemed to emanate from within and our hearts raced as we cautiously approached. The door creaked open with a ghostly groan, revealing a scene of utter desolation. Dusty furniture lay in disarray, cobwebs hung in the corners and the air was heavy with the scent of decay. But what chilled us to the bone was the sight of an old worn photograph on the mantel. It depicted a family, a mother, father, and a young child, their faces etched with sorrow. It was as if time had frozen in that moment of despair. Beneath the photograph was an inscription, Never forget. The wailing continued, echoing through the cabin's decaying walls. We followed it to a room at the back of the cabin, where we discovered an old wooden trapdoor in the floor. With trembling hands, we lifted it, revealing a dark earthen tunnel beneath. Hesitant but driven by curiosity, we descended into the tunnel, our flashlights piercing the oppressive darkness. The cries grew louder and we soon realized their source, a hidden chamber buried deep underground. Inside, we found a room filled with chains and shackles, their cold, rusted metal bearing silent witness to untold suffering. The walls were lined with scratches and etchings, the desperate marks of someone who had been imprisoned here. As the wailing reached its crescendo, we discovered a journal tucked away in a corner. Its pages were filled with the anguished writings of a man who had been locked in this chamber, tormented by the relentless cries that had haunted us. We never did learn the fate of the man who had penned those desperate words, but the eerie cries that had led us to this place had been his torment, a ghostly echo of a tragedy long forgotten. Terrified and shaken, we fled the cabin, leaving behind the wailing and the darkness that had consumed it. We returned to our campsite, packed our gear, and left the wilderness behind, haunted by the chilling discovery we had made. To this day, the memory of that forsaken cabin and its mournful cries lingers in my nightmares, a reminder that even in the depths of the wilderness, the past can reach out and grasp you in its chilling grip. It was the summer of 1997 and my friends and I were eager to embark on a road trip adventure. We had just graduated from high school and this was our way of celebrating our newfound freedom before we scattered to colleges and universities across the country. Our destination, a remote abandoned mining town in the Nevada desert that we had heard about from locals. The sun hung low on the horizon as we set out on that fateful morning. Four friends packed into a beat up old van with a map spread across the dashboard. The desert stretched out before us, 
a vast expanse of sand and sagebrush that seemed to go on forever. It was desolate and eerily quiet, with only the occasional tumbleweed rolling across the cracked highway. Hours passed and the landscape remained unchanged. The old town was rumored to be located far off the beaten path, and we began to wonder if we were on the right track. The relentless sun beat down on us and our excitement began to wane as the miles dragged on. Just as we were about to give up and turn back, we spotted a weathered sign by the roadside. Welcome to Dustwood Population Zero. It was faded and barely legible, but it was the confirmation we needed. We followed a narrow dirt road off the highway and into the desert, winding deeper into the arid wilderness. As we approached Dustwood, we were struck by the sight of dilapidated buildings rising from the desert like specters of a bygone era. The town had been abandoned for decades, its wooden structures weathered by time and neglect. We couldn't help but be drawn to the eerie allure of a place forgotten by the world. We parked the van in the town's dusty square, the tires crunching on gravel as we exited the vehicle. The air was hot and dry and the silence was oppressive. The only sounds were the distant hum of the wind and the creaking of old timbers. Our first stop was an old saloon, its swinging doors barely hanging on their hinges. Inside, the bar was covered in a layer of dust, and broken glass littered the floor. Faded posters and remnants of a bygone era decorated the walls. It was as if the town's inhabitants had simply vanished, leaving everything behind. As we explored further, we stumbled upon the remnants of a schoolhouse, its chalkboard still covered in faded lessons, and a long-abandoned general store, its shelves barren and splintered. It was a town frozen in time, a snapshot of a once-thriving community that had fallen into decay. We ventured deeper into Dustwood, our footsteps echoing in the empty streets. It was as if the town itself was holding its breath, waiting for something to break the silence. The sun was beginning to dip below the horizon, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch infinitely. As we approached the outskirts of town, we noticed a building that stood apart from the others, a large, imposing structure that loomed like a dark sentinel against the fading light. It was the old Dustwood Mine, the source of the town's prosperity in its heyday. We couldn't resist the urge to explore the mine, and we made our way inside, our flashlights piercing the inky darkness. The air grew cooler and damper as we descended into the depths of the earth. The tunnels seemed to stretch on forever, their walls lined with the remnants of mining equipment. As we ventured deeper, the walls of the mine began to close in around us, and the sense of isolation grew more pronounced. The beams of our flashlights danced along the walls, revealing ancient cave-ins and tunnels that seemed to lead to nowhere. Suddenly, we stumbled upon something that sent shivers down our spines. A series of handprints, smeared in what appeared to be blood along the tunnel walls. They were accompanied by crude drawings of terrified faces and desperate pleas for help. We exchanged nervous glances but pressed on, compelled by a mixture of curiosity and dread. The tunnels twisted and turned, leading us deeper into the labyrinthine darkness. The air grew colder and the silence was oppressive. It was then that we heard it, a faint, distant sound like a whisper carried on the wind. At first, we dismissed it as our imagination, but it grew louder and more insistent, echoing through the tunnels like a mournful cry. We followed the sound, our footsteps echoing in the narrow confines of the mine. It led us to a chamber, its walls adorned with more blood-smeared handprints and chilling messages. In the center of the chamber stood an old wooden platform, its surface stained with what could only be described as a pool of dried blood. As we approached, our flashlights revealed a rusted chain and shackles attached to the platform, and a shiver of horror coursed through us. It was a chilling reminder of the town's dark past, a past that had been buried beneath layers of time and silence. The whispers grew louder, their words incomprehensible but filled with anguish and despair. We knew we had to leave to escape the suffocating darkness of the mine, but as we turned to go, the entrance to the chamber slammed shut with a deafening crash plunging us into darkness. Panic surged through us as we fumbled for our flashlights, their beams revealing that we were no longer alone. Figures emerged from the shadows, their faces twisted in terror and suffering. They were the specters of Dustwood's past, the souls of those who had toiled in the mine and perished in its depths. 
Desperate and terrified, we fought to escape the chamber, but the figures closed in around us, their bony hands reaching out as if to drag us into their eternal torment. The whispers grew into a cacophony of agony, drowning out our cries for help. Just as all hope seemed lost, the entrance to the chamber suddenly burst open and blinding daylight flooded in. We stumbled out of the mine gasping for breath and found ourselves back in the town square, the sun hanging low on the horizon. The figures of Dustwood's past remained trapped within the mine, their mournful cries echoing through the tunnels. We knew we had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. Terrified and shaken, we piled back into the van and sped away from Dustwood, leaving the abandoned town and its haunting secrets behind. As we drove into the desert night, we couldn't help but wonder if we had disturbed something in that forsaken place, something that should have remained hidden. To this day, the memory of Dustwood and the chilling encounter in the mine haunts my dreams. It serves as a stark reminder that some places are best left untouched, their secrets buried in the sands of time, waiting for the curious and the foolish to stumble upon them.